the topics we are going to see is CubeSat, Green Climate Fund, International Udan, and Prison Reforms. CubeSat. CubeSat is nothing but it is a miniaturized satellite that can be utilized for deep space research. So it is a cost effective one so that the universities and many other small scale academic institutes can also go for the deep space research institute. And this CubeSat, the recent news with respect to this CubeSat is NASA has launched the CubeSat to study this mass. So the recent the CubeSat of Marco CubeSat has been sent the images of Mars. And these CubeSat has been launched using this InSight Mars lander. And the two CubeSats that has been launched by this NASA are Marco A and B. This Marco stands for Mars CubeSat 1 and A and B. It has been nicknamed as Eve and Wall E. And next important topic is the Green Climate Fund. The recent news with respect to this Green Climate Fund is the Green Climate Fund has accepted $1 billion to provide for poor countries. So the main objective of this Green Climate Fund is to fund for adaptation and mitigation with respect to this clean, uh, climate changes reforms. And this Clean Climate and the recent uh, summit of this Clean Climate Fund has been initiated that it has included this first climate finance to this Japan, uh, to China, sorry. And the second thing with respect to this recent institute of this Clean Climate Fund is that has been uh, provided for this water resources project in the Bahrain. These two important things that has been happened in this Clean Climate Fund. And this has been initiated by UNFCC in 2010. And it involves the 24 members. The board, total board of this Clean Climate Fund consists of 24 members with equal representation from both developing and developed countries. That is 12 members from developed countries and 12 members from developing countries. That shows there was equity among the members in this uh, decision making of Green Climate Fund. And apart from that, the headquarters of this Green Climate Fund, this is in Cheon, Korea. And the most unique nature of this Green Climate Fund is, it is the only standalone multilateral financing mechanisms to fund for this climate change. And the another thing with respect to this Green Climate Fund is, it is equally funding for both mitigation as well as adaptation. So how we can handle this climate change so that we can have this, uh, or the impact on this agriculture or many other fields so that we can have man much more of a disaster management with respect to this Green Climate Fund. And the next topic is International Udan or Overseas Udans. This International or Overseas Udans is nothing but it is just an extension of this domestic Udan. The Udan stands for Uday Deshka Am Nagrik. That Udan is a air connectivity scheme. So this international or overseas Udan is connecting. The main objective of this Udan is to connect this local destination that is tier 2 and tier 3 cities of India with the domestic uh, with international flight centers. So that we have, have the connectivity, air connectivity with tier 2 cities of India with international foreign uh, destinations. The recent news with respect to this international Udan is Recently, this Assam government has launched an initiative to have for this uh, bidders to have more and more international Udan scheme. And it, thereby we can have more utilize this open sky policies which India have with many of these Asian countries. So we can fully utilize this open sky policies thereby connecting this Indian Tai 2 cities, Tai 2 and Tai 3 cities with foreign destinations. And the important thing we have to notice in this Udan is First thing is, one, only state government can provide subsidy for this Udan scheme. While in domestic Udan, both central and state government will have the share in providing the subsidies. That is the important thing we have to notice in this. And another thing is, like this uh, domestic Udan, this Udan will also have a financial support and flying exclusive for the route, only for three years. And after that, it will not give this much financial support. And second important thing we have to notice it. Only Indian carriers with more than 70 seats will have be eligible for this international Udan. And another thing is, as per like, uh, since like a uh, domestic Udan, this Udan scheme will not provide any cheap uh, ticket fare. So it is just providing an opportunity to build more and more airports and air connectivity for the tier 2 cities of India with foreign destination. Apart from that, there will be no cap on this uh, ticket fare so that we will have this cheap ticket fare. And next important topic is prison reforms. The recent issue of this prison reforms is the Tamil Nadu government has uh, requested to release this convict of this Rajiv Gandhi murder case. So because the government has said that, Tamil Nadu government has said that they have been in the jail for more than 27 years. So there is no need for go beyond this endurance level of more than 27 years to have uh, put in in the prison. 
So with that uh, initiated, the Supreme Court has launched a panel to study the prison reforms that can be conducted in India. So the recent panel that has been launched is under this uh, Justice Amitabha Roy Committee. This is not the first uh, committee that has been launched for this prison reforms. There has been already two committees has been formed in the earlier 1970s and 80s to study this prison reforms of India. So the earlier two committees were AM Mullah Committee and then Krishna Iyer Committee. These two committees have been initiated. Right now, the third committee has been started to study this prison reforms that has been required for this India. So, the, uh, what are the questions that has been live in front of this committee is, first and foremost thing is, whether the prison, that is retaining the uh, prisoners within the prison, is for the punishment or for the reforms. Because uh, prison, the jail is not just for this punishment purpose. It is more and more for this objective of having a more reform. So that the person who has been put in the jail will come out as a reformed person. So they will not be threat to the society. That is the first and foremost objective of this prison. So whether that has been followed by India or not. That is the first question that has been in front of this committee. The second question is how much India is uh, Indian judicial system has been utilizing this non-prison alternatives. That is like uh, providing this community service using this prisoners. So how much level India is utilizing this non-prison alternatives is the second question in front of this committee. The third thing is this prison overcrowding. Recently there was a much and more, most and many of these prisons in India has been uh, overfilled with these prisoners. So there need, there is a high need to build more and more prisons. So whether it is judicially using this, our human, our economic resources of India for this prison building is quite important or not. That is the next important question in front of this committee. Because of this uh, prison over uh, overcrowding, that is also in leading to this inadequate prison staff. So more and more staff we need to require recruitment so that we can handle this prisoners. In India, the ratio of this prison staff with respect to prisoners is 1 is to 80. While uh, it is going that much level of high, uh, high level. And second thing is, 67% uh, of inmates of India are under trial. That shows this lack in the speedy uh, judicial system throw many and many people to be in the jail as uh, under trials. That shows that is the main reason for this overcrowding of prisoners in India. So what we have to do as uh, uh, by utilizing this inmates so that we it is not may a punishment period rather than it will be opportunity for the people to have reformed themselves. Then how we have to handle this white collar crimes because nowadays there was more and more economic crimes that's happening in India. But the judicial system is not that much uh, strong to have this punitive material penalties for this economic crime criminals. So we need to have more and more strong punitive material punishments so that this economic crime uh, person will not fly away from India. And another important thing with respect to this Indian prison reforms is the brutality of this prison officials and the venality of the prison officials. That is venality is having in exchange of money the prison officials are misbehaving in a dishonest manner. These two things has to be handled by this Indian prison officials properly so that we need to have more and more prison reforms. And another important thing is we have to have more and more health and education aspects of this prisoners because how we are handling this health and education will show whether a petty thief will person entering as a jail will not come as a gangster. So he need to be a reform. So this health and education is the primary thing that we have to focus on. So how the stress management, how the yoga and other meditation things can reform this person so that they can integrate into the society in more comprehensive manner. And another important thing is the concept of open jail system. In India, we have less utilized this open jail system. We have only 63 open jails in India. That too, almost 50 percentage is in Rajasthan only. So rest of the states will have minimum two and three open jails only. So if there was a unplanned murders or if there is a first time offenders, we can go for this open jail system rather than going for the closed jail system. Because in Rajasthan itself, this closed jail, closed jail system is 14 times more expensive than open jail system. That shows we need to go for this open jail system at least for this uh, inmates who are at the under trials. And um, another important thing is in India, as per this NCRB, that is National Crime Records Bureau of 2015, that is only 3 percentage of the criminals has been a habitual offender. Rest of the 93, 97 percentage of the persons are first time offenders only. So these habitual offenders we need to be handled in a different manner from this first time offenders. So we can opt for this open jail system and non-prison alternatives for this first time offenders while this closed jail system for this habitual offenders. 
and this habitual offenders need only more and more reforms so that they can have how to integrate with the society in a useful manner. And another important thing we have to notice with respect to prison reforms is this prison, a good prison or bad prison will not have any vote bank. So there is no vote bank politics for this prisoners. So more and more the political will is not happen. Uh, the, there was a lack of political will to have prison reforms. So we need to have not in spite of this uh, vote bank agenda, we need to have more and more prison reforms. Then only these prison prisoners when coming out of the jail, they will integrate with the society in more comprehensive manner rather than becoming a threat to the society again. So that the period that they have been captured, that is they have been detained within this prison will be utilized properly so that we can have a more uh, human resources that can be come out of the jail. So that they will be asset to the country rather than they have been a liability to the country. With that thing, we will end up today's current affair session. Thank you. Like and comment this channel.